Well, good evening, folks, and welcome once again as we uh, spend a few moments together in uh, God's Word and in listening to the pen of inspiration. Let's bow our heads before we begin. Father in heaven, I want to thank you for bringing us together today. I want to ask, Lord, that you will bless us on this beautiful uh, sunny afternoon. And Lord, uh, as we just talk about this important topic of finding peace and not having fear, uh, we ask that you would lead and guide and direct in this conversation. And I ask that your Holy Spirit would be felt amongst each one of us. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, today at our uh, noon prayer session, uh, Monique talked a little bit about uh, fear and, and how we, you know, need to rise above fear and then not live in fear. And we know that fear was not present in the Garden of Eden until sin came, and it's a result. Uh, I talked a little bit about the fact that sometimes there's such thing as healthy fear that kicks us into fight or flight mode and helps us to get away from danger. If you see a bear or a mountain lion or something, uh, your uh, adrenaline will kick in, fear will kick in, and you may find you can run faster or do things you wouldn't normally do. Or if your child is in a burning house, you may be able to lift things you couldn't lift. So there is a healthy aspect, but there's a very unhealthy aspect that leads to distrust in God or is uh, a showing that there's a distrust in God. God and there's there's other reasons we fear too. I've talked with people that are afraid because they know that their life is nearing the end if God doesn't intervene and there's a fear of the unknown yet we know Jesus and therefore there should not be an unknown when we are in Christ. Now I want to be careful when I say that because it's so much easier for me to say that sitting here on my porch having been to the doctor recently and been given a clean bill of health uh, than it would be if I found out I had a short time to live. So it weighs heavy on my heart uh, when um, people speak of, of, of this kind of fear and, and I recognize it and I understand there's a legitimate uh, reason people have that. So how do we work through that? How do we get beyond that? Let's let the Bible and the pen of inspiration give us some advice this evening. John 14 verse 27, John 14 verse 27 has this to say, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, Give I unto you, let your heart be, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. John 14, 27. I would like to tie that with a uh, reading uh, from the Review and Herald and some comments. Uh, the Review and Herald, May 19. Um, Lots of good things. I wish we still had Sister White writing in uh, the Advent Messenger today. I know we can pull out quotes, but uh, it's always nice. And I often wondered, what would it have been like to be getting this firsthand in the moment? Uh, I'm glad we have it now and we have all these things we can read later. Um, so let's see what, what the pen of inspiration has to add. Jesus says, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth I give unto you. Don't let your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And that is why we picked that passage, because it's a direct quote in the first paragraph that I'm looking at. The peace spoken of by the great teacher is larger and fuller than we have imagined. Christ is ready to do large things for us, to restore our natures by making us partakers of his divine nature. He waits to link our hearts with his heart of infinite love in order that we may be fully reconciled to God. But it is our privilege to understand that God loves us as he loves his son. Did you hear that? God loves us as he loves his son. When we believe in Christ as our personal savior, the peace of Christ is ours. The reconciliation provided for us in the atonement of Christ is the foundation of our peace. But gloomy feelings um, are no evidence that the promises of God are of no effect. You look at your feelings and because your outlook is not all brightness, you begin to draw more closely the garment of the heaviness about your soul. You look within yourself and think that God is forsaking you. You are to look to Christ. In me, Christ says, you will have peace. Entering into communion with our Savior, we enter into the region of peace. 
So what this is telling me is if we find that peace is beginning to leave our soul, that we are losing uh, that feeling that we once enjoyed, and whatever trials and troubles and tribulations we're going through, uh, we may be, uh, you know, staring at the reality of death, something we did not think was going to happen, or we may be uh, holding a child like I was a few, a month or so back, not knowing what's going to happen next. And it's very easy to enter into a place of anxiety and fear. But when we focus on Jesus, when we focus on the goodness of Christ, uh, when we draw near to him and we let that atonement, that at one moment, getting back to that place that Adam and Eve enjoyed before the fall, they used to walk and talk with Jesus in the cool of the evening in the garden. Today, he enters our lives. He enters our hearts. We can walk and talk with him again because atonement has happened already. When Jesus died on the cross, he made that atonement for you and I. We need to accept it and by the indwelling spirit experience that oneness, the absence of fear and anxiety that can only come when we are linked with Jesus would we have Christ in us, the hope of glory. I want to read a little bit more here. Satan is our destroyer, and I love this. Satan is our destroyer, but Jesus is our restorer. Satan may be the destroyer, but Jesus is our restorer. We must put faith into the constant exercise we must put faith into constant exercise and trust in God, whatever feelings our feelings may be. Now, you remember we went through that series uh, not that long ago, Boot Camp for the Last Days. When I think of exercise, I think of people who go and lift weights. They get up early and they go to the gym and they spend hours grunting and groaning and lifting heavy weights and stressing and stretching their muscles and trying things they have not tried before and lifting more weight than they've lifted before. Try practicing your faith the same way. Try pushing further. Try asking God for more. Try expecting more. Expect to see differences. You know, many people that work out, work out for a week or two, and they don't see immediate big bulging muscles or a six pack or all these things. And so they say, oh, it's not working and they quit. The key is time. You've got to keep at it for a long period of time to see the results. If you give up on that extra devotional time that the pastors asked you to do and try to put in and you say after a week or two, I don't feel anything different. I'm going to stop. It's because you have not kept at it long enough. You have not been practicing or exercising and expanding that faith. It doesn't happen overnight. It's not like that. It takes time and effort on our parts to draw near the throne of mercy, to experience that atonement that Jesus wants to have, that at one meant, at one with me, his nature melting my nature and changing my nature and making me more and more like him. Isaiah says, Who is among you that feareth the Lord and obeyeth the voice of his servant, that walketh in darkness and hath no light? Let him trust in the name of the Lord and say upon his God, You can say with the psalmist, Yea, though I walk through the valley, valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Believe in the Lord your God, and so you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you will prosper. And when he has consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord that they should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army, saying, Praise the Lord, for the Lord has sent an ambush against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were coming against Judah, and they were smitten. Unto you, therefore, which believe his precious he is precious. Consider the fact the Lord has given his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, 
but have everlasting life. David experienced this, and he sent out people to praise and sing songs and, and thank the Lord even before the victory was won. And after the victory, he said, this is the one who gave us the victory. If you looked at David's life, uh, as they, they were talking about the psalmist, he always gave God the glory, and he always recognized God's blessing, and he walked so close to God that God did wonderful things for him. You and I can experience that atonement. You and I can remember that God gave his son, and because he gave his son, we can have eternal life. All we have to do is accept Christ, invite him into our hearts, let him push the fear out, and let him fill us with the peace that passes all understanding. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I ask that you would fill us with your peace. Remind us that we need to exercise our faith every single moment of every single day. We need to add faith to faith. We need to strengthen it. We need to work it out. We need, just like exercising, if we don't keep at it, we won't see the results that we desire, the results that you desire in us to have us being fit vessels that you can use to do great and mighty things for your kingdom. Lord, wherever these folks are at that are listening this evening, wherever each one is at, impress upon each one of us the need to, to do more, to, to pray more, to experience more of your love and your grace and your mercy through a closer relationship with you each and every moment of each and every day. Lord, may we purpose in our hearts to add more reps, I'll call it, to our reading of God's word. Maybe we've been spending an hour. Maybe we've been reading a few chapters. Let's double that. Let's do more than we've already been doing, and let's expect more from your throne of grace and mercy as we move forward. Lord, most of all, we pray that your perfect love would cast out all fear. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, folks, blessings. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Hope to see you at prayer meeting later tonight. Have a good evening.